We were doing the reading of the names over on killedbypolice.net of those executed by the Blue Syndicate and and reading those names to remember their names because because the Blue Syndicate kills uh, two to five people every day. Uh, virtually all of those are unjustified. And we were reading through names today on the last live stream, and I read the name of Robert Earl Vaughn, who was 70 years old. And I thought, wow, why do these tough guy cops need to kill a 70-year-old? And so I went and I found the story on this man, and I want to read you guys the story of the absolute cowardice of the Springfield, Oregon Police Department and of these these treasonous murderers hearts that reside down there because when I read this story I was I was kind of blown away so uh, this happened uh, just a couple days ago in Springfield Oregon uh, and let let me actually read a few things about this to you guys I'm gonna let you see it a little bit but uh, a 70-year-old man was shot and killed by Springfield Police early Tuesday morning after arming himself and creating a barricade inside his 6th Street home. Well, that sounds serious, right? I mean, they have to do something about that. Springfield police officer shot at Robert Earl Vaughn shortly before 7 a.m. because he presented a lethal threat. Now, now he didn't actually do anything to police. He wasn't shooting at police. He just, they say, look, notice that light, nice little quote there. He presented a lethal threat. Let's go down a little because this is where it gets dark. No officers were injured. The three officers who fired their weapons have been placed on paid administrative leave, which is standard procedure. The incident began about 5.30 a.m. at a single-story tan house in the 2300 block of 6th Street. Neighbors called the police to report that an elderly man was shooting at a street light. Vaughn had reportedly told a neighbor who was trying to, to speak to him about this that he wanted the police to come and kill him. Ken Peterson said he lived next door uh, to Bob, as Vaughn was known around the neighborhood, and for the past five months, he said he heard his, his neighbor firing some shots early Tuesday morning. Bear in mind, there was no victim. Nobody was being fired upon, and he jumped out of bed to try and help his neighbor. Now, I want you to notice the courage of Ken Peterson versus the cowardice of the Springfield police. Vaughn was lying in his front yard with a 357 Magnum revolver, and Peterson said he thought at first that Vaughn had shot himself. I knew he was depressed. This is his neighbor speaking because he lost his wife of 47 years recently. And he began going downhill. He had tried to kill himself a couple of times already, the neighbor said. So I came out of the house to get the gun away. Now notice this man has a gun and the neighbor walks up and he has no problem putting himself at risk because this man was not a threat to others. This man was dealing with his own struggles. And so the neighbor walks up. I came out of the house to get the gun away from him. And he said, don't worry, I won't shoot you. That's what, what Vaughn said. And I said, Bob, we have to get you off the lawn. It was then that Vaughn fired his gun two more times at a street light. Peterson said Vaughn then put the gun under his chin like he was going to shoot himself. But Peterson, the neighbor, calmly talked to Vaughn who handed the gun to him. Another neighbor had called the police. This was, this is the worst decision of the day. Let's continue. Peterson convinced Vaughn to go inside his house and he settled Vaughn into a recliner. There was another gun in the house, Peterson added, so he took both of, of Vaughn's guns with him and he told Vaughn he would be right back. Vaughn said, I hurt. I hurt. And he asked, can you take me to the coast? And, he, and the neighbor, he said, yes. This weekend, I'll take you to the coast. But I have to go to work. And Peterson said, I would have taken him, 
But he said, this weekend will be too late. The men had never gone to the coast together, Peterson said, but he was willing to help his neighbor. I did my best to help him. He hurt, he said somberly. Peterson made it back to Vaughn's house. The last Peterson never made it back to Vaughn's house. The last he saw him, Peterson said Vaughn was sitting comfortably and relaxing in his chair with no problems. But when Peterson reemerged, the police were already on the scene evacuating neighbors and asking others to shelter in place. Shortly before 6 a.m., while Vaughn was inside his house, the be police began using a loudspeaker. Now, do you notice the contrast? The neighbor tried to help his neighbor, even though there was some risk to him. The police come, and they instantly make an incident. They instantly cower and hide instead of trying to help their neighbors. Vaughn began to close his window blinds. McKee said, and officers could hear him sliding furniture around in the apartment to attempt to barricade himself. This was at 6 a.m. At 6.55 a.m., officers shot at Vaughn while he was in the front of his house. McKee said after a police shooting, the established protocol is for officers to locate the victim and attempt to render aid, but because of the barricade, by the time police located Vaughn at 7.38, they found him dead. Vaughn McKee said was known to police officers. Officers were dispatched to his address as recently as June 30th to investigate the report of a suicidal subject of this man who lived in the house alone. At that time, he had cut his wrists and was taken to the hospital. And so they shot him. The police murdered Robert Earl Vaughn this week. Not because he did anything to them, but simply for the crime of being in pain and hiding in his house. He wasn't actually shooting at them. They want to pretend that this is some kind of a hostage situation that they heroically saved the day of the neighborhood, and yet the neighbor did 10 times more helping of his neighbor than the police who came there and only killed and spilled blood. They were such unmitigated cowards that they couldn't even go up and try to help the man. He wasn't even out doing anything or even pointing a gun. He's out there in his yard with a gun and the neighbor comes up and calmly tries to deal with him. But he's now in his house barricading himself in. So the police just start shredding bullets through the front of his house and kill him because they're too big of cowardly, treasonous, crime syndicate terrorists to actually try to help their neighbor. And then they have the gall to go out in this community of Springfield, Oregon and pretend that they're the peacekeepers and the law and order. So this 70-year-old man, he probably has grandchildren somewhere. He's dead. Not because he killed himself or committed suicide by cop or did harm to anyone else. He's dead because a bunch of uniformed men strutting around like cocks, like they're heroes with their guns, have the audacity to say that they're law and order as they go and kill old men because they don't have the courage to simply walk up to the front door and have a conversation. And so that's the story of Robert Earl Vaughn. But, but his story is more than that, guys. Because the story that you hear about Robert Earl Vaughn is where cowardly police gunned him down in cold blood. But there's more of a story. There's more of a story than the suffering of his, of his pain from his wife having passed. There's lots of things that Robert Earl Vaughn did in his life. Maybe some good, maybe some bad. But I won't remember Robert Earl Vaughn as someone who was afraid and a coward and who, who, who got into an altercation with police. I'll remember Robert Earl Vaughn as an old man sitting in his house, afraid and hurting, and who police knew full well what his situation was. But instead of doing their job, instead of following the law, they murdered him. Here's the Springfield Police Department.
you can find them on, on Facebook down here in, in Springfield, Oregon. Go let them know what you think of their hair on this uncle. As they, as they strut around in their, in their pretty uniforms, taking photos of themselves, looking for selfie opportunities, and looking for people who will say, well, they did what we had to do. Well, guess what? They didn't. Because the neighbor faced a far more hostile situation than the Springfield police. And he didn't have to kill that old man. But the Springfield police were too big of thuggish cowards to bother trying to resolve the situation. I just wanted to read his story, just like the reading of the names. I'm not gonna let their names just be forgotten, guys. And if my turn comes, and they murder me, read my name, and I'll read yours. It's time to stop the blue line. It's time to have the courage to tell your friends and your neighbors that all the police in America have chosen to be criminals and terrorists. And we should be for peace. We should love them enough to tell them the truth. And we should also love our neighbors enough to oppose the blue. Take care.